Welcome to our session today about the college application essay writing process in partnership with Rice University. My name is Paula Massad and I'm the English Language Education Advisor at the U.S. Embassy in Doha. And today with me is my colleague, Asil. Asil? Hello, everyone. I'm Asil Logeli. Uh, I work on Education ESA and Culture Programs. We would like to welcome you today. And please, uh, you are most welcome to share your comments or questions through the chat box for our participants through Zoom. And whoever is watching us and watching our live session on Facebook, you can share your questions through the comments and we welcome your questions anytime. Just we will have some time by the end of the session dedicated for our questions. And please, we would like to share with you that this session is live on Facebook. You can watch it at your face. You can share it with uh, your colleagues or like your friends who are interested in this topic. So thank you so much for joining us and we hope you will benefit from this. Thank you, Asil. Many of you are just beginning the college application process and we know that grades and test scores are, you know, really important criteria. But in addition to that, well-written essays that reveal your true personality are also extremely important. So I'm very excited today to welcome our presenter for today's webinar, Jessica Griffiths, who's going to provide some great guidance for the essay writing process. Jessica? Great. Well, thank you so much, Paula and Asil. It is my absolute pleasure to be with you virtually. Um, I would say good morning, but it's also good evening for those of you listening. Um, before we jump right into the topic, I'd like to kind of give a little bit of background information about myself. Um, number one, my presentation style, whether we're in person or on Zoom, I try to pride myself on being quite informal so that you all feel comfortable to ask questions. So I know that I'm, I have a fancy job title, Associate Director of Admissions, but just know that I'm really here as a resource for you and I wanna to try to give you as much information to really empower you to be your authentic selves while you're completing your university applications. And that's whether you're applying to Rice or if you're applying to kind of any of our other peer institutions. I have been working at Rice for just almost a year. I'm originally from Canada, uh, grew up in Canada, went to university in Canada, all Canada forever and always. So I am an international, I guess, student or an international employee myself here in Houston, Texas. And I do really enjoy that because I feel like I can relate to you all on a whole new level because I have chosen to leave my home to come to Houston um, and I know that many of you will be doing the same thing. So um, I'm going to try to keep my presentation to 40 minutes. Um, so I may talk a little bit fast because we have a lot of ground to cover. Um, I want to leave as much time as possible for questions. And we're actually going to take like three question breaks. I'll be doing the holistic review section. Then we'll take a little breather for questions. We'll talk about the essay, a little breather for questions. And then I'll just do three very quick slides on rice. But with the rice portion of this presentation, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I really want to drive you to come to our virtual events that are just an hour dedicated to rice. And that's where if you are interested in rice, you can gain more information here. But really my sole objective in this presentation today is to just equip you with the tools to have a great application. So um, I believe Asil is going to be sharing the screen for our slides and we can jump right in. Also, um, for those of you listening, if you want to just put in the chat where you're all listening from, if I don't know if everyone's in Doha or if people are joining from um, different cities, but feel free to let me know where you're listening to us from. And we're always there. Perfect. That's it, Asil. Thank you, Asil. So we're going to go back up a few slides. Okay, good. We have people listening from Doha. I'm assuming mostly everybody's from Doha. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Um, and also in the chat, if you wanna let me know what curriculum you're in and what year you're currently studying. So if you're seniors or upper sixth form or IB diploma two, I know we're kind of all studying lots of different things, senior. Okay, great. So you have my introduction. I really appreciate all this information. Okay, so we can go on to the next slide. So holistic review, um, going, sorry, I see, I'll just go back one slide. 
So for the holistic review, um, I like to start here first when we talk about essay tips because understanding the holistic review process will give you insight into how your essay and your supplemental essays are a puzzle piece in creating that whole perspective of who you are, kind of giving us that full complete picture. And many universities, obviously including Rice, use the holistic review process to understand you as a student within the context of your environment. And that gives us great insight into what opportunities and realities are like for you. So the holistic review process isn't about a minimum GPA, isn't about a minimum SAT score, it isn't about a certain number of activities. It's really about the full picture. And we are not comparing you to students that are studying in Seattle. We're not comparing you to students that are studying in South Africa. It's really about looking at you within um, the context of your reality. So it's not numbers driven. This is not a process that is quantifiable per se, but rather more qualitative. Um, and I think we'll go on to the next slide. So I, I could talk about holistic review forever, but I really wanna try to keep this uh, nice and short. So context and whole file review. So when we're looking at your entire file, we know that no two students are alike. Um, and this is why we emphasize the importance of context because a university like Rice, we're rated number one in the US for race and class interaction. And so, of course, like having that rating is important, but in order to maintain that ranking, we need to make sure that our incoming class reflects a variety of cultural, ethnic, um, socioeconomic, diverse perspectives. And by getting to know you, we can kind of slot in students from all over the world um, just to make sure that we're having a really diverse class, it's incredibly important to us. Next slide. So telling your story, I really love to drive this slight point home. You are not powerless in this process. And telling your story means that there is not a traditional path that you should have taken to get here. There is no right steps on how to get admissions into highly selective institutions. So. I really want you to embrace your authenticity. Um, and that includes celebrating all of those things that are meaningful to you in your life. So for those of you that are juniors, it's not like you need to be doing something entirely different as a senior. And for those of you that are seniors, you don't need to reflect back on your choices and say, oh, I wish I had done this differently. Everything and all the decisions you have made up until this point are incredibly valid. And we want you to just embrace and celebrate those. So. Make sure you talk about your academic and personal interests, right? We want that kind of that balance, that interdisciplinary understanding of who you are. Um, you know, maybe kind of reflect on if there were certain moments over the course of your high school years that have really shifted your focus, whether that's community focus or maybe it's understanding or having a passion for a different subject area. You know, applications are gonna ask you certain questions and it's up to you to then take those questions and to craft it in a way that reflects your unique path. And none of you should be trying to stand out. Students often ask me, you know, what should I do to stand out? How can I be unique? If your objective is to stand out and be unique, you will fail at achieving that objective because that sentiment alone is going to throw you off course from really telling your story and kind of embracing that power that you have in this process. Next slide. So planning and preparing Equally as important as telling your story, this one's a little bit more straightforward in terms of things that you can, you can do. So you know, strategize your application. Look at the whole realm of what the application is asking you from your biographical information to honors awards, to list of activities, to your common app or coalition essay, um, all the prompts. You know, we really want you to get a full understanding of the scope of the application and then become incredibly strategic as to how you want to highlight different components of who you are within those different parts of the application. So, you know, if you want to use the same general idea in both the application and like a different place in the application, you need to ask yourself, I'll, and I'll give you an example of this. So if you want to use like the same general idea, and let's say you're interested in engineering. We love engineers, admirable path. Let's say for engineering, on your honors and awards, you list that you won, um, you won an award for FIRST Robotics, okay? Great, I see that, wonderful. So on your list of activities, I see that you're captain of the robotics team. Okay, that makes sense. I can kind of see this connection. Now, once I'm getting into your Common App essay, 
and you're talking about robotics, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm a little concerned now at this point that this student might seem very one dimensional. And you can talk about robotics in all three places. But when you get to the point of talking about robotics in your essay, you're going to need to find a way to creatively bring out another aspect of who you are because you know that you're not only robotics, there's other elements of your personality. So you need to, you know, if you're going to have that general idea, you have to be strategic in terms of how you twist and shape that concept to still give us a sense of who you are as a well-rounded individual. And planning is key. The planning and preparing process, do not start the application process the night before. Um, don't think that it's going to take one day, like you can just sit down in one sitting and get it done. Um, be realistic about the amount of the amount of institutions you're applying to. Um, I can't tell you how many times we have sat down and we've read an application and we can tell that you you did it last minute. And we know that we're not very high on your list because we can tell that there had been minimal effort put into the actual composition of the application. So planning and preparing is just also about knowing how much time you have available to you and giving each application the amount of effort and time that it deserves in being able to reflect not only who you are, but also your interest in the institution. Next slide. So authenticity is kind of in the same vein as telling your own story, but with authenticity, we really want you to have consistency throughout your application and different parts of your application are going to showcase different parts of who you are, as I mentioned. Um, so look at every part of the application and really think about how you can authentically share your experiences. As an admission officer, we're not going to assume anything about you. I've been to Doha, I've visited many of your schools, but I'm not going to make the assumption that because I've been to your school and I have a very limited understanding of what life is like in Doha, do not leave that up to me. Make sure that you are giving as much information as possible. As your territory manager, I do know things, but also I'm not gonna make an assumption, right? Maybe people will often say, oh, students from this particular region don't do at X. Like let's say that some regions having a part-time job isn't as popular as it is in other places. Well, I'm not gonna assume because you live in that region that you don't have a part-time job. You might, so you have to tell me these things. So make sure you're not leaving anything up to assumption um, so that I have a complete picture of who you are. Um, Another thing that I find students don't often really understand is in the holistic process, and we follow something called committee-based evaluation, as your territory manager, I'm essentially a steward of your application. I'm like your champion. So I read you the first time, and then I'm taking you to various committees, and I'm like singing your praises on your behalf. I'm like, oh my gosh, this student's so great. They have this, 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 and this. And I'm taking you all the way along. So the more ammunition you give me for me to celebrate and sing your story at the various stages of the application process, the stronger your chances are for admission. As an admission officer, I am not here to look for negatives. I'm not looking for errors. I'm looking for wins. I'm looking for like, again, that just that not even diamond in the rough, just those gems and those jewels so that I can proudly share your experiences with my colleagues as we start to shape our incoming cohort. And again, I know that is rice specific, but that committee based evaluation in um, conjunction with the holistic review process is very common to many of our highly selective peer institutions. And next slide. So maximizing the application. And so we, these are the, on this slide, you'll see the, the various application components. And some of you will have more experienced counselors than others. But the very fact that you're all here uh, lets me know that you have a fantastic, you've been utilizing the resources of Education USA. And they are phenomenal at not only presenting you with these types of workshops, but also to help you kind of really understand how to further maximize the application components. The ones that you find listed here, of course, there are more application components than this, but I've listed these ones because these are things that you have control over, right? Like you're going to fill out the biographical information. These are things that on the application you fill out. Of course, there is a whole nother list of things that your school is going to fill out or um, your recommenders are going to fill out. But here, I just want to kind of quickly um, let you know or kind of remind you that there are so many different ways 
for you to highlight who you are. And it doesn't matter which application you select, whether it's common app or coalition app, it's going to ask for the same information. And I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a brief moment. So with these, I do want to highlight two components. So the additional information section, I think, is one that a lot of students tend to shy away from. The additional information section of your application is a um, it's an open field. Um, there's not a limit on characters. Now, that's not to say that I want you to like submit 3000 word essays, but don't be afraid to use the additional information section. If you feel like there's a part of your story that you can't fit in somewhere else. So I'll give you an example. Let's say on your transcript, your junior year or maybe your sophomore year, maybe you had a grandparent pass away and maybe your grades dipped a little bit during that time. Now, you can't really put, that's not gonna fit in your biographical information, it's not gonna fit in your honors, it's not gonna fit in your activities, you're not gonna write your whole essay about it because you have all these other great things happening. Can't really talk about it in contact and you can't really put it into supplemental essays. But that particular moment in terms of how that impacted your grades is really crucial. And it gives me an understanding of, okay, so we have some, we have some Bs in our sophomore year, but, they were very close to their grandparents and their grandmother passed away right before exams happened. And you at least have given me, again, that little nugget of information that I can take with me to explain why there was a dip in your grades. So don't be afraid to utilize the additional information section to give us a little bit of context if you feel like there are some unanswered questions in your application. Also, students will they'll use additional information for a variety of reasons. So just know that um, it's there for you to utilize. And another component that I have forgot to add on this particular slide, both the Common and the Coalition app have a question about, we're calling it like the COVID question, but there is a space where if you want to share information on how your family or you as an individual are impacted by COVID, you can put that here as well. And so we will pause here, a little timeout, so we'll go to the next slide. And I'm going to open up the floor for five minutes if anyone has any questions about the holistic review process or kind of any questions about anything I had just mentioned and I'm gonna take a little water break. Any questions at all? I don't see any questions in the chat. I don't know if anybody wants to unmute their microphone and ask a question. Yeah, whatever you guys are comfortable with. If someone wants to unmute and come on, or if you just want to um, ask through the chat function. So, I mean, okay, this oh. is an, the, this, I will answer this question. So okay. the question is, can you lie on your application? I appreciate the transparency of that, of that, um, of that question. Now, there's two ways, I mean, I think we all know the obvious answer is, no, but as an institution, and we do have checks and balances in place to try to mitigate, um, and I don't want to say catch, but to try to um, really ensure that the authenticity that is happening in those components that you can control matches up with what we're hearing about you from your recommenders. And this is where like your letters of recommendation are really important because if on your side of the application, I'm like, Robotics, we'll use an example again. You're like, I got this award, I was captain, my essays is all about robotics. If I'm then getting to your counselor letter and your teacher letter of recommendations, and no one has mentioned that award or that you were captain of robotics, I have grave concerns over the level of honesty that you shared with us about how important robotics really is to you. Um, so those letters of recommendations are, you know, somewhat of a checks and balance. Of course, it's not a perfect system. But also when you complete your application, there is a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a disclaimer. So you are signing something that is saying that what you are writing is true. So don't overinflate uh, your experiences. I, I don't think you're doing yourself uh, nor the institution any justice. And I think that also kind of comes into the telling your story. In the US, there are over 3000 universities, some of the best uh, post-secondary options in the world. There is a place for you. You do not have to lie 
to kind of rig your way into a school because there is a school that is perfect for you for exactly how you are at this uh, this point in your life. So please don't please don't lie. Okay. And um, a lot of people apply. How can one read a lot of application essays and quickly determine whether he or she is a fit for the university? Great question. So I'm sure everybody can see the question in the chat, but we received like 20,000 applications and it does seem like a lot, but we also have a very large staff. And once November 1st hits, my life is only reading applications and I have very aggressive targets. And for every application, it's two people reading it. So we actually divide up your application and have a conversation about you. So that committee based evaluation as your territory manager, I'm looking at one half of your application. My coworker who's sitting with me is looking at the other half and we're talking about you. So we're able to cut down the time, but still have a great conversation about you, who you are as an applicant and if you're the right fit. And then from there, by the time you're actually admitted to Rice, your application will potentially have been read by almost six people. Um, and that really gives us insight into fit because it's not just my opinion of fit, it's my opinion plus my colleagues. Um, and we'll take one more question. Oh, if we make any mistakes in grammar, is it okay? I know this is being recorded and I feel confident saying this because I was in a session with somebody that's in my leadership the other day. Grammar, I would rather see a grammar error than for you to abuse a thesaurus. I would rather see and know that you wrote it than for me to get a sense that maybe your parents wrote this essay. So I think the odd grammar mistake, of course, I want you to proofread and edit and we'll talk about that, but the uh, you making a grammar mistake is not going to be the make or break decision on your application. Um, how do you add, so application essay we're going to get to very shortly. Um, are there any important websites that can help us with writing an application? We'll share those resources after and we're going to jump right back into the essay portion. So thank you all for your questions and giving me a chance to Sorry, Sorry Jessica, we have a question on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Elizabeth Hughes, she is saying if the personal essay is not required for a school, should we still send to give more information? That's a great question. Only give the universities what they ask for. So institutions that are not asking for a personal statement and institutions that are not asking for letters of recommendation are not going to read them. And I say that as somebody who worked at an institution that did not require any of those writing components. I, I did admissions there for three years. Students would send it all the time, don't even look at it. Because it's not a part of our requirements and if we're saying don't send it and then you send it and then it influences us, we're not being equitable to the other students. So if they're not asking for it, I would not send it. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay. So essays. Arsil, any other questions from Facebook? No, no, we had just one question. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay. I hope everyone's doing, we have great attendance so far. So I hope everyone's engaged and that I'm not talking too, too fast. So for essays, many of you or many of the seniors that are tuning in today, a lot of your grades and your test scores are largely set. Um, you know, that you, you've picked your classes, you've been studying in your high school for two or three years. Um, the essay is a part of your application that you now have complete control over. So it's, again, it can be daunting. It can be a little bit anxiety um, ridden, but again, it's all about like embracing that, that power that you have. Your essay should complement and not contradict your application. So it's about that synergy that we're seeing that we're really getting a sense of a consistent person here um, through your letters of recommendation, through your list of activities, and also through your essay. Essays can serve a lot of purposes. Uh, but really, they should provide perspective into your character and into your personality. Students often ask me, do you want more factual? Do you want more emotional? Do you want more, like, more direct? Do you want more analogy? There is no right way. And I never will give a specific example because I don't want to, like, hinder your creativity. I don't know what a good essay is until I read it. And I will not say otherwise because I don't wanna say that this type of essay tends to work well and this one doesn't. So if you have taken the time to structure an essay where you feel like your character and your personality really shine through, that's a successful essay. Um, kind of like the high level tips, be thorough and concise, 
write multiple drafts, proofread and edit, um, have other people read and review your essay. And when I talk to students about this, have two different types of people read your essay. You know, there's people that you're going to want to read your essay for that, you know, sentence structure or your paragraph structure for your grammar um, to kind of clean up the editing. But I would also encourage you to have people who really know you best. Um, so maybe it's a relative, maybe it's a best friend, maybe it's a cousin, maybe it's an aunt or uncle. Have people that you really trust read that essay towards the later stages so that they can tell you if it really sounds like you or not. Oftentimes, students are so hung up on not making grammatical errors or making sure that it sounds fancy that as more people read their essay, they really lose the essence of who they are and their voice really gets muffled. It essentially gets edited out. So kind of once you're in that later editing stage and you're like, okay, grammatically, I haven't have no glaring errors, have somebody that you love and trust who knows you really well read that essay and just say like, does this sound like me? Is the essence of who I am really coming through there? Um, and I think that that will really help you ensure that that little piece of authenticity and telling your story by just having people in your life keep you honest. And by no means am I suggesting that you're like lying, but you're working so hard to try to get into a university that I think sometimes you lose faith in your perspective and who you are and your accomplishments. So try to have both types of people read your essay. Um, we'll go on to the next one. So quick tips, choose your topic wisely. So I'm sure many of you have already looked at the Common App and the Coalition. There's, there's different prompts that you can pick. Um, demonstrate depth and maturity. So in addition to you know, being thorough and concise, you'll make sure you're able to talk about a particular subject area with like uh, a sense of showing personal growth and development. Show passion and not just professional ambition. Um, I might go into a little bit more detail about this, but oftentimes students essays will be about, you know, their career ambitions. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an engineer. And that's great. But you need to still tie it back to that intellectual curiosity piece because universities like Rice, um, we are a place for you to grow and learn. We don't want you to look at us as like a stepping stone. Like, oh, we just want to go to Rice so we can be a doctor and then we're going to go on and live our life. It's like, no, like your life here at Rice is important and how you're going to contribute to our community is really important. We don't want you to come here so you can rush through your four years just to get to medical school and then forget all about us. Like, take some time to enjoy the undergraduate experience. And so if you do choose to write about a professional ambition, there's a way to do it where it can serve both purposes. So just try to be mindful of um, if you're being overly ambitious in your essay without really showcasing those um, characteristics and uh, those um, intellectual kind of curiosity, personal attributes that will shine through. And then this one, you're gonna hear from me like three more times. Take your time, plan, edit, write multiple drafts, and proofread. Do not rush this process. And next slide. So for those of you that are seniors, I would imagine that many of you are well on your way um, and have chosen an essay topic. Um, for those of you that are juniors or potentially younger, this is just a great way to maybe get the ball rolling. So think of a topic that is broad. So we're going to use family as an example. We all have family. Um, and I think for many of us, like family is a huge influential aspect of our personality um, and our character. So broad topic. Okay, I want to talk about family. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about family. So then we're going to get a little bit more specific about a topic. So family. In my particular household, and I've just as an example, um, my parents, my mom's grandparents, or my grandparents on my mom's side lived with us. So I had a very close relationship with my grandmother. Now, Lots of people have a great relationship with their grandmother. So that maybe isn't necessarily the most unique point yet, but I'm going family to grandmother, okay? Now to hone in my unique point where I can really kind of make this essay pop is maybe focusing on when I was younger, my Nana would teach me how to cook our family recipes. And as we would cook these family recipes, she would talk about history. And I was always very interested in history as a form of storytelling. Now, my major is history. So you can see how you've taken that, that broad topic of family, narrowed it down to a grandparent, 
kind of highlighted a very specific point or a unique point that then kind of highlighted um, a focus that really shifted your intellectual curiosity. So this type of way of choosing topics, there's lots of other ways you can do it as well, but this is a great exercise for you to kind of go through where you're like, maybe it's sports, maybe it's research, maybe it's a part-time job, maybe it's, you know, we can literally come up with a million examples, but really just try to think about that inverted um, triangle of going really broad, reflecting, um, taking stock on yourself and having a level of self-awareness and creatively making those connections back to your life. Next slide. So common topics. Um, just a few warnings. And again, seniors, if you are writing about these things, don't freak out. But know that if you are going to pick a topic that is listed here, these are some of our overused topics. It doesn't mean that they're bad. Um, it's just if you are going to pick a common topic, just know that your essay may be held to a slightly higher standard because it is something that we are seeing repeatedly. Um, it's also harder to achieve that goal of authenticity if we're like, we've read this type of essay numerous times, and it may be easier for the admission officer to zone out because it is such a common topic that we're hearing about. Um, so just know that if you are looking at one of these, um, that you really take that time to think about the slide before with the broader topic specify and then honing in on a unique point to make sure that, um, that like your personality is really shining through here. And next slide. So showcasing what matters to you. Um, remember, you know, your your essays, and, and Paula had mentioned this very briefly in our introduction as well, but your essays are just really a great place for us to understand what has shaped you. And as you're brainstorming, you can again kind of consider these three questions that are listed here. So have you overcome a particular challenge? You know, what are specific factors that have shaped you? Um, and what piques your intellectual curiosity? And again, that example of like the family, the grandmother, the cooking, the history, really kind of um, kind of also flows with those three questions and it will look different for all of you. And that's the beauty of this process. So just kind of like take stock, write those down um, and kind of reflect on how, um, how you can highlight what's important to you and, and share your unique story. You know, if a particular challenge has played a very influential role in your life, of course, if you feel comfortable, so maybe if it was something that might be perceived as traumatic or negative, if you feel comfortable sharing that, um, you can, but by no means do you feel like, I don't want anyone to feel like if something difficult has happened in your life that you have to share it with us because it's going to make you stand out. And this kind of goes back to that. If you can't speak about it in a positive and mature light, don't write about it in your essay. Um, that is something that if something really difficult has happened in your, in your personal life that has had an impact on your grades or something, you can maybe write one sentence about it in the additional information section. Um, so that that's just kind of like a little disclaimer because I often worry I often worry that students think that like admission officers want to hear about all the bad things and it's not true like if we do hear about the bad things we always want them to have a for the student to have a positive reflection and we want to see like that you kind of overcome that obstacle than to kind of leave it on a, a negative note um next slide and so this is where I kind of got ahead of myself, but we did talk about displaying personal growth. And so if you do choose to write about a topic or obstacles in your life, try to maintain that mature composed tone. Um, you know, don't you try to avoid using any negative or critical language and that like, try not to use negative and critical language, like no matter what your essay topic is, but you know, especially if you are going to be sharing some incredibly personal experiences, try not to be um, negative or critical. And if you can't write about it in a way without being negative or critical, it is not a topic that you should be writing about for your, for your essay. Um, we really want to see that inner strength and that growth outweighs frustration and anger. And that's not to say that we want you to look at certain experiences in your life with rose colored glasses, but your common app essay gives us insight into your level of maturity. And we know that you're about to embark on a very difficult transition in your life to go from the Gulf to living in the US. And we need to kind of see that 
you you can handle that challenge well. And I know that they're not necessarily apples to apples in terms of comparison, but that essay does give us a certain level of insight into your um, your level of resiliency. Next slide. So this is my little slide about passion over profession. I'd just like everybody to take two minutes and read over both approaches. And in the chat, let me know which approach you think is more effective. And I'm gonna take a water break. So do we think approach A or approach B is more uh, effective? Right, great. I see, I see B is coming in the whole time. And you know, it's not to say that A is, A isn't bad, but A is that like utilitarian approach I was talking about where like, yes, that is an admirable goal, but we don't want to be viewed as like that stepping stone of like a means to an end versus you really like enjoying the journey or the quest. Um, so definitely approach B is a stronger way to talk about your interest in medicine in a way that still gives us insight into that intellectual curiosity and that like that interdisciplinary drive as well. And it also shows that you have like a really great understanding of your path and those building blocks to kind of get you to medicine. So both approaches, you know, everyone's entitled to their approach, but I definitely would want to encourage you to think about how you could make your essays more like approach B versus um, approach A. And next slide. So editing, and we only have a few slides left, so I know that I want to leave lots of time for questions, but you no know, brainstorm. And we talked a little bit about that inverted triangle method. Um, also just kind of like writing down um, answers to those three questions that we looked at as well. So kind of divide your thoughts into coherent paragraphs. By no means does this essay have to be a traditional five paragraph essay. Um, your drafts, write multiple drafts. Um, when you're writing your drafts, read your draft aloud to yourself. Um, that'll help you find your own typos immediately before you even ask anybody to proofread. Also, it's a great way to find subtle improvements to your sentence structure if things are starting to sound unnatural. Like if you're reading this and you're like, this doesn't sound like anything I would say, um, then also that's, that's probably how like work, because we're going to be reading it in a way that's going to sound like that. So if we're like, this doesn't sound like anything a 17 year old would say, that's going to kind of like you know, raise some questions for us. Don't worry, you can still capitalize the pronoun I in these essays. Um, you know, use natural sounding words. I don't think I have to say this for this region. There are certain places where I have seen kids use like texting abbreviations. Don't use any abbreviations, please. Um, this is an essay, not a text message. I know none of you would. I would probably be more concerned with like using the uh, overly unnatural sounding words versus kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Try to stay away from cliches. Um, we hear them over and over again, just stay away from the cliches. And once you have finished writing, as I had mentioned, talk to your friends, your teachers, your parents, and really work to not edit out your own unique voice. Next slide. So I'm gonna kind of skip over this slide the essay prompt example is just in the interest of time. These are just some examples um, we could go through, but I really want to leave more time for questions. So we're going to keep it moving past this one. Supplemental essays. This is really important to me and I've kind of hinted to this as well. So you will have your common app or your coalition essay. And then your, for every institution you apply to, most are going to have supplemental essays as well. And these essays are used to help schools to get to know you better. Um, but also to understand your motivation to attend their respective institution. So this is how we can ensure that you have done research on Rice or any of the other schools. Um, with your supplement, it really helps us advocate for you. And I'll use a very specific example. So remember, I'm your, I'm your teammate. I'm representing you uh, at admission committee. So I read your I read your application with my coworker. I'm like, this student has great grades. They have great awards. Like they have it all. 
we get to your why rice portion and you're like, I want to come to rice because it's a top 20 university and I can do research there and I want to be a doctor. And that, those things are all true and that's all great. But when I get to committee and I'm getting to the later rounds of trying to help you gain admission and we're sitting around this table with some of the best students in the world applying and they come to me and they say, Jessica, what, so what does this student want to do at Rice? Why do they want to come to Rice? And I'm like, because uh, we're highly ranked and they want to do research. And they're like, did they say what type of research? Did they say any clubs that they want to join? And I'm like, nope. Well, that right there has your application end on a very flat note because you haven't taken the time to actually understand rice. And I can tell you that that conversation will be had at the majority of the highly selective institutions you're applying to. So all of you should do your research beyond the admission website. You need to go deeper. You need to look at the program you're applying to, go to that department's website, learn about the professors you're going to be studying from you can actually look up what research they're doing. You need to make those very specific individualized connections to the institution or else it looks like you're just applying to us to increase your odds. And we can see that, okay, this student probably is applying to 20 other places and they just want to get as many offers as possible to keep their options open for as long as possible. And at our institution, because we are highly selective and we are a smaller, we have a smaller cohort, so only 4,000 undergraduate students, we don't have the space so we will not extend an offer to a student who doesn't seem like they legitimately want to come to Rice, even if they have a score of higher than 1580 and everything else is working to their favor. So just really understand that the supplemental essays are incredibly, uh, uh, are incredibly um, important and a huge missed opportunity in your application. So to the level of effort that you're putting in your Common App essay, don't forget about the supplemental essays and use the virtual experiences that all of us have now. Everyone has one hour information sessions virtual to help inform that process. Sorry, that was definitely a bit of a rant. Um, and next slide. So for demonstrated interest, I apologize for the, the slide formatting here. Um, demonstrated interest is actually closely tied to those supplemental essays. You're able to demonstrate your interest based on how you structure your answers to the supplemental question. So at Rice, we have three. It's, you know, why did you choose that major? Why do you come to Rice? What do you hope to contribute to our community? I'm paraphrasing the actual um, questions, but all of those three questions give you an opportunity to demonstrate your interest. Oftentimes demonstrated interest in a non-COVID environment would mean like, if I came to your school, um, did you come to my visit? If you came to Houston, did you visit campus? Um, so, you know, have you ever met a Rice alum or a faculty member or have you done an interview? So demonstrated interest is something that highly selective universities will look at. And I just want to let you know that in this day and age, demonstrated interest can be best demonstrated through your answers on your supplemental essay. And next slide. And these are just kind of your Final takeaways, kind of like the warm fuzzies, like as an admission officer, I really want you guys to remember these things like you're already different from everyone else. You don't need to lie. You don't need to overinflate. You don't need to, you know, sound more intelligent than you are. Like you are enough. Um, again, as you're selecting institutions to apply to, focus on quality over quantity. Don't just like apply to as many schools as possible thinking it's gonna increase your chances because it's actually gonna hurt you in a lot of places because you didn't put the effort into the application. Um, explain the genesis of your interest. And again, I'll use like my Nana, my grandmother story with like learning to cook red sauce and like her telling me about history that think about the genesis of why you wanna do what you wanna do. Don't leave anything out. Um, now's your time to wow us. Don't be humble. Show us what makes you you. Make sure your application makes sense. And then that last point, there is no perfect application. There is no form formula for admission. Um, so all you can do is just be yourself, which is the scariest, but also the most empowering thing. Um, and finally, I think we go on to questions. Um, Asil, so do you actually mind going, we're just gonna do the rice slides really quickly. And then um, I'll do questions for everything because I'm not really going to talk too much about rice. You all know that I'm from rice. I do information sessions every week. Um, I'll be doing some high school visits in Qatar as well. Um, 
So I'm actually not going to talk about rice unless we run out of questions and then I can talk about us after. So, um, questions. I'm looking at the chat here. So I'm going to start with this question. This is the most recent one. What kind of stories are admission officers most moved by? It's going to sound cheesy, but it's the authenticity. Like, I love reading your essays and every year I'm surprised. Every year it's a topic or something that I would have never thought about. Um, whether it's like, I had a student write a really interesting essay on how much they like goldfish and how they did goldfish breeding. And I'm like, I would never use like goldfish as an example to be like, oh, like this goldfish one was really great. I had one, um, I had a student that write a great essay about like how much they love Minecraft. Like it really, you know, we, we also have students that write about difficult things. Like maybe their parents went through a really difficult divorce. There's no way to say that like I am more moved by one or the other. Um, I think it's that like, I don't know what's in French, like that je ne sais quoi. Like it's like that, like that's that one thing that you really can't articulate. And I don't really want to articulate it because I don't want you guys to think that there is like one particular type of essay that is great because there's lots. And remember, it's also one aspect of the application. So you have other ways. Um, okay, next. What if we started the essay in a negative tone and shifted towards positive tone to reflect the changes happened to us? I think that's fine. So if it starts negative because you have to kind of like set the scene as to like what happened um, and then you're able to take us on a journey in terms of like, you know, obviously thoroughly and concisely within the word count. Um, I think that's fine because that in your essay, you're showing that personal growth. Um, and as long as you're ending on a positive note, I think that's completely fine. Um, what's the best way to start our application essay? That's kind of same to the what, what moves admission officers. There is no best way. Students do it so many different ways. So I'm going to leave that to you, which I know is like a non-answer, but yeah. How many words should we write in the application essay? You definitely have a word limit. I don't know the limit off the top of my head, um, but also don't feel like you have to hit maximum word count. There's some students whose essays are not as long as others and they're still effective. So just know you can't go over the maximum word count, but that doesn't also mean you need to like fill up space just to hit the word count either. Um, we'll talk about our experience that we've been through. Should we include talents and passions that we have? So for talents and passions, it, you might be able to show those through other ways. And, and when we talk about kind of common topics, like don't try to achieve too much in your essay. Um, it would really depend on like the passions and talents we're talking about, but your passions and talents are often evident in your list of activities and also um, your supplemental essays. So like those three rice questions where it's like, why do you want this major? Why do you want to come to rice? What can you contribute? That third one of what can you contribute? is also a great place to talk about your passions and interests because maybe you're a really great, maybe you're interested in chemistry. But when I get to your, how are you going to contribute to the rice environment? You're a really good baker. Like you make really good cookies and cakes and you can kind of make that connection of like, this is still a really important part of who I am. And I don't know where else to put this, but maybe it's like when I come to rice, you know, I would love to be a part of like the baking club or I would like to like bake for my, my housemates. So they you know, like there's lots of other components. And when we talk about maximizing the application, there's other places where you can kind of highlight those stories. Um, what if there isn't a specific thing that you can write about in an essay or write an essay about that would describe how I'm the person I am today? What else could I write about to make my application better and not bland? Hmm. Specific. What if there isn't a specific? Um, I mean, I feel like if you really reflect, you definitely have something. There absolutely is. And I think like when I think about to myself as a young high school student, I didn't think I had it either but I like definitely did. So like, this is where like, maybe you wanna do some more brainstorming to think about how you got to where you are. Um, and maybe ask your friends and family, you know, you might be really hard on yourself. Like you might be being incredibly hard on yourself. You, I do think that there's probably something um, that really describes why you are who you are. And I encourage you to continue to dig, to dig deep. Did I miss any questions? 
Um, Asil, anything from Facebook? No, uh, but there were some questions like earlier, maybe I, uh, sorry, just uh, maybe no, I no, no. Uh, So yeah. the, someone asked, so hey, I asked, what if she makes, if she has some grammatical mistakes, is oh. this okay? This is okay. This is okay. Not too many, but if you have a couple, that's okay. And precious Tom, so he's saying, um, uh, so the question is, how do you advertise yourself in the application essay? You advertise yourself through kind of the various steps that I talked about. So you plan and prepare and you're very strategic. Um, you do really good brainstorming. Um, and then you also kind of take that, that approach of broad to specific. So as you're brainstorming and thinking about what's important to you and kind of what piques your interest, what's shaped your life, you don't have to do those things together. I think some of you may have um, stronger cases for why you want to, like what piques your intellectual curiosity versus um, a particular instance or story that has like shaped you as a person. So I would just say brainstorming, talking to people you love, also talking to other people who've been through the application process. I don't want to encourage you to do that to influence you to write about what they wrote about, but they will have really good steps on um, their, their essay writing process that help them kind of come to that, to that place. And sorry, there is this question. Some people are interested in learning about the websites that would help them in writing their application. So I, so unfortunately I can't make any recommendations. Like as an admission counselor, I can't say, I, I don't, Rice doesn't have any. If Rice had one, I would be able to share it, but kind of any of the third party or external sites, um, I'm not able to, to promote. Yep. Um, what if I don't have a certain achievement or an honor to mention? That's okay. Like I, I have admitted students that don't like that their list of, act, their, um, not the list of activities. We want you to have activities. You definitely should be involved. I, I think that that's fine. But in terms of like a specific achievement or honor, there's other, there's other like elements of who you are. So we don't want you to like necessarily feel like, oh, you have to have won like a chemistry Olympiad gold or something. Um, you know, you're, I would say, you know, still, how can I like phrase this? Still be proud of your accomplishments, but don't feel like you're underserved because you don't maybe have a shiny award to, um, to kind of like back it up. So how would submitting the same essay to different colleges affect one chances? So um, submitting the same common app essay and coalition essay is totally fine. The supplemental essays, it, is, it, is, it will hurt you because I mean, I've seen students even put the wrong name. Like you could, like, I'm like, oh, well, they mentioned university, like they didn't even take the time to change the name of the university in the supplemental essay. Like that is not, um, that's not going to help your chances. Also, when we talk about those general statements of like, I want to do research and I want to engage in the community. Like if I feel like I can substitute university names in your supplement, it, it's not going to speak highly because you could just be crafting really good generic responses. Um, and then just like substituting them in for all of those essays. So for the Common App Coalition one that we're talking about, where you're really trying to let your personality shine through, that can be the same for the universities that are using the Common and the Coalition app. But the supplemental essays do not repeat. Um, we absolutely can tell, and it does not look good on your application. Um, is it acceptable different essay for each university you're planning to apply to? Um, yeah, only for the supplemental essay components, and they're not full essays, they're more short answer questions. Do you think that application essays will now be very crucial since many universities are making SAT optional? Great point. So Ali made a really good point. Um, I'll repeat that question. Do you think that application essays will now be very crucial since many universities are now making SAT optional? I think they will be, because remember, if we think about the puzzle and now less of one piece. So everything is kind of a little bit more important because we don't have that other element. So. I wouldn't say that it's like more important than your um, your transcript, but we we it's of equal weight, but there's also one less element to help us make that decision. 
Um, and I will do a shout out. So for Rice, if you go to, if you just Google visit Rice University, you can go to all of our virtual events. We have uh, Ask Me Anything with Rice students. We have a way for you to connect with Rice students that are in your program of interest. We do academic study sessions. So if you want to know just about natural science or engineering or social science at Rice, you can do that. Um, we have an international specific information session. Um, so much stuff going on. So you can just go to the website um, to learn more about Rice. And I'll actually put my email address in the chat. Um, JKG8 at rice.edu. I am your territory manager. So if you want to email me, we can set that up as well. Okay, thank so, you, Jessica. What a fantastic session. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you all really covered a lot of, uh, provided a lot of important information for students who are um, starting the application process, the importance of planning, using an authentic voice, um, and especially, you know, that your emphasis of the importance of the supplemental essay. And I just think just are all really um, great takeaways for the students who participated today. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I also just want to let students know that if you want to reach out to us at Education USA. There's our contact information on the slide there. We also do some advising through the um, Education USA Facebook page. There's an opportunity to book an individual appointment. Um, feel free to take advantage of that. We're there for you. We do most of our appointments on Tuesdays. So if you have time and you have questions about the college application process or even searching for a college in the United States, please um, reach out to us. Asil, do you have anything you want to add? Thank you so much. And our um, uh, followers on Facebook, they are saying it's very remarkable and uh, amazing type presentation. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thanks. Uh, it was really useful and uh, people enjoyed it. And for um, our participants through Zoom and followers Facebook. So it will be the session will be on our Facebook and you have you have here the our uh, the ID for our Facebook page. You can watch it at your pace and feel free to let your friends know about it and you are most welcome. And as Paula mentioned, feel free to reach out to us on our Facebook or this email. And thank you so much for all of you who joined us today. And we hope to see you in some more sessions in the future. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. It was like truly my pleasure. Um, and I hope you all found it valuable and I look forward to reading any potential applications. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jessica. Thank you.